That was somewhere in between Michael Jackson and the Ninja Turtles because I got a record. I got a record player and I got like the old Jackson 5, like an old Michael Jackson and the gang uh, album. And uh, that was your song. But as I was singing it, uh, it's, it's sounding a lot like. The intro to the Ninja Turtles, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> what the heck? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stream. My name is Freddy Lopez. We were on the video games. Today, though, we are on the Bible study. And I'm going to release to you, for the first time ever, one of the prayers off the upcoming prayer project titled, I Need Prayer. So this prayer is specifically uh, geared towards uh, people who are experiencing doubts or hard situations where maybe you feel like God's not listening or he doesn't hear you. And now maybe you're like, I don't, I don't doubt God like that, but just, just hear it out. Okay. Check it out. This is just one of the 19 prayers of this project. Today we're reading Nehemiah first seven chapters. Um, never before heard or released. I mean, I, I shared it with the people on the project and they probably shared it with their friends and their moms and stuff. So keep that in mind. But uh, here we go. Alpha, Omega, beginning and the end. You are strong and mighty. There is nothing you cannot do. You are Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father, you know the things that are inside of us, the things that go through our hearts and minds. There are times when we feel like we are in the eye of a storm, in the heart of a desert, with our feet in sinking sand, crying out to you, praying that you rescue us from situations and circumstances. Sometimes, it feels like you're silent and inactive during our suffering. Our minds begin to wander and question your love, goodness, and attentiveness to us. We somehow forget about every time you've ever rescued us from trouble, suffering, and destruction. We yell, we cry. We become angry, sad, and depressed, waiting for you to answer, come through, or save us. And sometimes we even begin to doubt that you're real. Like, why would a loving and good and powerful God leave me here to suffer? We even blame you somehow as if our own choices weren't the thing that led us to destruction in the first place. But what about the stuff that's out of our control? We've seen in the book of Job the things he suffered, the horrible things he went through. I have come to understand that sometimes bad things just happen, but you desire our hearts. You want our worship. And this is how we can fight back. You are not deaf to our prayers, and you are not blind to our suffering. You can turn bad things around for our good and your glory. It's hard to see when we're going through it, but when we look back, it's easy to see you in the midst of it all. You are there with us every step of the way taking care of us, pushing us forward, shielding and protecting us. Sometimes you allow us to go through things to strengthen us, like a sword in the fire. It must be tempered, hammered, and sharpened, that our experiences and testimony can help to lead others to Christ and encourage them. That we can stand as a testament to God's power, ability, and authority. Even when we can't see you, feel you, or hear you, you are working on our behalf. You were king of the universe. You spoke and reality exploded into existence. You took a breath on an empty vessel and humanity was born. I know how powerful you are. You can do all things. You are real and you do love us. Forgive us for doubting you, God. Forgive us for complaining about you. Remove the fear and doubt from our hearts and minds. Your word says that faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things unseen and that without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. Build up our faith. Help us to recognize how shallow our faith is so we can come to an understanding of where our relationship is with you. Give us better perspective of our circumstance and your position in it all. Help us to trust in you, Lord, with all of our heart, and not to lean on our own understanding, but to acknowledge you because you will make our paths straight. Give us faith like a mustard seed to move mountains and endure storms because with Jesus, nothing is impossible. James 1 says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. 
because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. Help us to walk by faith and not by sight, because we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance. Blessed are those that have not seen, yet believe. Give us deeper faith. Open up our eyes and ears to see and hear you clearly. Make us sensitive to your presence and spirit. Help us to believe. In Jesus' mighty name. Whoa, in Jesus' mighty name. So if you're just joining us, that was a prayer off my upcoming Alpha. prayer project. Oh, let me pause it, let me pause it. That was a prayer off my upcoming prayer project. I need prayer. And so the idea by the whole thing is that people are searching for him, right? Hey, what's going on, Julius? People are searching for him, and we want to help them find him. So that being said, this prayer project is a bunch of different prayers, 19 prayers, different topics, different people, different situations, different circumstances. That was just one of them. And so you're going to be able to listen to all these prayers. People are going to be able to find these prayers. People are going to be able to go through and share these prayers with their friends. Hey, you're dealing with suicide and depression. Hey, you're dealing with uh, this. You need encouragement because you're serving in ministry or at church and maybe you're feeling burnt out. Here, listen to this one. Or you're you're dealing with your children are dealing with this or your marriage is dealing with this. Listen to this one. Listen to this. And I'm just I'm just so excited, man. I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I am excited, but let's get into the to the uh, Bible study. It's been a minute. It's been many moons. All right, my head is cut off on the thing, but that's okay. Um, let me pray. Us in we'll get started. We're gonna read like the first six or seven chapters of Nehemiah. It's only like thirteen, so we'll read half today, half tomorrow, and uh, yeah. All right, Father God, thank you for another day of life. Thank you for allowing us to get into your word today. We just thank you for the breath in our lungs. And as we're reading today, whether it's the stories you're trying to help us understand or you're trying to speak to us through the scripture, I pray that you do what you want to, God. I pray you bless our time together. I pray you bless our relationship with you and continue to grow us. Give us heavenly wisdom and revelation, God, and not just head knowledge or the ability to say, oh, yeah, we read today, but help us to make it impact us. God, help us to slow down today and just recognize that you're all around us. And I think we just get so worried about life and things and stuff and people and situations and family or finance or whatever it is, God, that we just like, we're just looking at our hands and our problems that are in our hands. And sometimes we just get so fixated on the things that maybe in our household or or whatever that we forget to look up sometimes and see the grander scheme and the greater plan that you have for us and so i just pray against the enemy distracting us from your will for our lives that's outside of our homes being good fathers and sons and daughters and mothers so help us to realize and recognize the plan that you have over our lives to build your kingdom at a higher level in jesus mighty name amen i don't know why half that prayer was in there but I, those are the words that I just felt like the Holy Spirit was saying. All right, let me zoom in a little bit more so y'all can see. <clears throat> the book of Nehemiah. It's been a little while since I read on the stream, so if I stumble, <laughs> reading out loud is different than reading to yourself, so don't judge me. <sighs> Nehemiah, contemporary of Ezra and cupbearer to the king in the Persian palace leads the third and last return to Jerusalem after Babylonian exile. His concern for the welfare of Jerusalem and its inhabitants prompts him to take bold action. Granted permission to return to his homeland, Nehemiah challenges... I can hear my wife. Nehemiah challenges his countrymen to arise and rebuild the shattered wall of Jerusalem. In spite of oppos uh, opposition from without and abuse from within, the task is completed in only 52 days. A feat even the enemies of Israel must attribute to God's enabling. By contrast, the task of reviving and reforming the people of God within the rebuilt wall demands years of Nehemiah's godly life and leadership. The Hebrew for Nehemiah is Nehemiah, Nehemiah, Nehemiah spelled different. Comfort of Yahweh. The book is named after its chief character, whose name appears in the opening verse. The combined book of Ezra and Nehemiah is given the Greek title Esdras Duraran. 
You like it? You like the accent? Ezra, Ezdras, Duteran, Um, I'm butchering that hard. Ezdras, uh, let me just share this real quick. Sorry. I'm just sharing to make sure everyone gets the opportunity to join the Bible study. Plus, I'm over here messing up these, uh, this stuff. Guys, make sure you share this with your friends so they can be a part of the Bible study stream or whatever. And then we can take prayer requests and do all of that stuff. And I'll probably pray, uh, play another prayer at the very end. And if you if you get on here every day when I'm starting and when I'm finishing, you're probably going to hear the entire prayer album, to be honest. Like, I always put new music on here before anyone else even gets to hear it. So you get to hear new music. You get to hear the prayer project and whatever else I'm working on. You usually see it or whenever I'm in here. Anyway, uh, second Esdras in the Septu Septuagint, Septuagint language, a third century BC, Greek language translation of the Hebrew Old Testament. The Latin title of Nehemiah is uh, Liber Secundus Estrade, the second book of Ezra. Ezra was the first. At this point, it is considered a separate book from Ezra and is later called uh, Liber Nehemiah, the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah, just a little background, a little foreword before the word. You know what I'm saying? The words of Nehemiah, the son of Hakali. I'm butchering the names. I can sit here and get corrected. I'm going to forget. They're all hard to read. So it kind of, I'm sorry in advance. It came to pass in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the citadel, the Hanani, Hanani, one of the one of my brethren came with men from Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews who had escaped, who had survived in captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said to me, The survivors who are left from the captivity in the province are there in great distress of reproach. A great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is also broken down, and its gates are burned with fire. So it was. When I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned for many days, I was fasting and praying before the Lord God of heaven. And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who you love and ob with those who love you and observe your commandments. Let me read that again because I stuttered and it's important. You who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commands. Interesting. Let me just stop for a second because what did Jesus say? If you love me, you will follow my commands. Not show me you love me by following my commands, but if you love me, you will follow my commands. He's not demanding that you follow his commands because he wants to control you. He's saying out of love, you should follow my commandments. And what are we reading here? Nehemiah is saying, I pray, Lord God of heaven, oh, great and awesome God. And he's not, he's not like, he's just describing God. He's saying, you're awesome. You're great. You're Lord of heaven. He's admiring him, right? He's adoring him. And then he says, Ye who you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Interesting how this all points back to Jesus, right? Please let your ear be attentive. Let me zoom in a little bit because I don't know if you can see that. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now. Day and night for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sin of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, Though some of you were cast out to the farthest parts of the heavens, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your, now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servant who desire to fill your... Look at this. Like, let me just... I don't know. I just 
These are your servants, your people, whom you have redeemed by your great power. He's still like, God, look at your actions. Look at your greatness. Look at your power. Look at your ability. Look at your authority. Oh, Lord, I pray, please let your ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant. Who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day, I pray and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cup bearer. What? For some reason, when I'm on the stream, people want to call me. I'm like, my phone's dry all day long. People want to blow me up and text me. Like a couple people called already just while we're on here for the first 15 minutes. No one even wants to talk to me all day long till we get on here. <laughs> Nehemiah sent to Judah. And it came to pass in the month of Nisan. Nisan, like the car. Just kidding, it's spelled different. In the 20th year of the king Artaxerxes, when wine was before him, that I took the wine and gave it to the king. Now I have never been sad in his presence before. <laughs> Therefore the king said to me, Why is your face sad since you are not sick? This is nothing but sorrow of heart. So I became dreadfully afraid and said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city, the place of my father's tombs lies waste and its gates are burned with fire? Then the king said to me, what do you request? So I prayed to the God of heaven and I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, I ask that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's tombs, that I may rebuild it. Then the king said to me, the queen also sitting beside him, How long will your journey be, and when will you return? So it pleased the king to send me, and I set him a time. Let me just pause for a second. You're telling me, and I try not, guys, if you're here for the first time, we're reading as if we're discovering the scripture together for the first time. So I try not to give spoilers about to what's about to happen next. And I try to ask questions that I think that you might ask as a first time reader, because there are people who have never read some of the parts of the Bible we're reading. And there's some people who have never read it all. And so they're here for the first time, whether you're watching live or on the playback. So if you're here, YouTube, Facebook or Twitch, thank you for being here. If you have any questions, drop them in the chat. If you have prayer requests, drop them in the chat. I would love to pray with you. You don't have to be scared or nervous or shy or embarrassed. Uh, we, we everyone here is like either learning or they're eager to pray with you because that's what they come here for. So, um, so you're telling me Nehemiah is chilling over here, just cup bearing, pouring cups, pouring it up for the king Artaxerxes, and you know he said, "Hey, you know what? I'm sad today because my the place of my father's lies waste," and he's not in like. He's not in a place where he's like, like on this guy, King Artaxerxes is not serving God. I'll just, I'll just say it plain and clear. He's not serving God. He's the, he's the Persian king. And Nehemiah just happens to be at the right place at the right time with the right relationship with the right person to make an impact for God's kingdom. Interesting, right? What, what am I saying? That there are times in your life where you're going to be in the right place at the right time with the right relationship with the right person to build God's kingdom. And I don't mean like, you know, lead one person to Christ. I'm talking about building God's kingdom and on a higher overview level. Maybe you're setting up structures or processes or church plants or ministries or organizations or or whatever it is but like man i just i'm looking at this like okay this could be us god can use us wherever we're at this dude's just pouring cups for the king and now he gets the opportunity to rebuild the city of jerusalem wow interesting then the king said to me the queen also sitting beside him. How long will your journey be? And when will you return? So it, so it pleased the king to send me. And I set him a time. Furthermore, I said to the king, if it pleases the king, let the letters be given to me for the governors of the region beyond the river that they may must permit me to pass through till I come to Judah. And a letter to Asaph, 
the keeper of the king's forest, that he must give me timber to make beams for the gates and the citadel, which pertains to the temple for city wall and for the house that I will occupy. And the king granted them to me according to the good hand of my God upon me. Then I went to the governors in the region beyond the river and gave them the king's letters. Now the king had sent captives. Oh, man. Excuse me. Now the king had set captains of the army and horsemen with me. When the sand ballot, <clears throat> the Horonite, and Tobiah, the Ammonite, official heard of it, they were deeply disturbed that a man had come to seek the well-being of the children of Israel. <laughs> Nehemiah views the wall of Jerusalem. So you're telling me no, Nehemiah is in the presence of Artaxerxes, and he's just a cupbearer, and now... My boy's like, hey, you know what, king, let me go do this. And you know what, go ahead and write me some permits so they don't rob me or kill me on the way there. You permit me to pass. And you know what, let me go ahead and grab some of your timber and your resources so I can build this, uh, you know, the gates of the citadel and everything. Oh, you know what, Nehemiah, go ahead. Go ahead. I want to do this for you. Wow. Favor. Amen. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the stream. Um, sorry, let me just. So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Then I arose in the night and I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and the refuse gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem, which were broken down and its gates, which were burned with fire. Then I went out on the foundation gate to the king's pool, but there was no no room for the animal under me to pass. So I went up by night by the valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered the uh, entered by the valley gate and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews, the priests, the nobles, the officials, or the others who did the work. Then I said to them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come and let us build the wall of Jerusalem that we may no longer be a, be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God, which had been good upon me and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this good work. But when the sand ballot, the Horonite, Tobiah, the Ammonite official and Geshem, the Arab had heard of it. They laughed at us and despised us and said, what is this thing you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? So I answered and said to them, the God of heaven himself will, pro will prosper us. Therefore, we, his servants, will arise and build. But you have no heritage or right or memorial in Jerusalem. Dang. Rebuilding the wall. Then Elishib, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priest, and built the sheep gate. They consecrated it and hung its and hung its doors. They built as far as the tower of hundred of the the tower of the hundred and consecrated it. Then, as far as the tower of uh, Hanel, next to El Elisha, the men of Jericho built, and next to them, Zakur, the son of Imri, built. Also, the sons of Hassan, Hesana, built the fish gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. And next to them. Merimoth, the son of Urijah, the son of Kaz, made repairs. Next to them, Mushalam, the son of uh, Berechiah, the son of Mes Meshez Meshezabel, made repairs. Next to them, Zadok, the son of Bana, uh, Bana made repairs. Next to them, Tekoites Teka made repairs. But their nobles did not put their shoulders to the work of the Lord. Moreover, Jehodiah, the son of Pesiah, and Meshalam, the son of Besodia, repaired the old gate. They laid its beams and hung its doors with its bolts and bars. And next to, the, next to them, Meltiah the Gibeonite, Jadon the Maranathite, the men of Gibeon and Mizpah, 
repair the residence of the governor of the region beyond the river. I'm butchering these names. Thanks for sticking around. Next to him, Uziel, the son of Harhaya, one of the goldsmiths, made repairs. Also next to him, Hananiah, one of the perfumers, made repairs. And they fortified Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. And next to them, Raphiah, the son of Hur, leader of the half of the district of Jerusalem, made repairs. Next to them, Jediah, the son of Haramath, made repairs in front of his house. And next to him, Hattush, the son of Hashbaniah, made repairs. So you're probably thinking, Freddie, why, why do I care about all these names and who's doing it? It's showing us who's putting in work, the amount of people who are helping with this freaking wall and all of the stuff. Because they said they built it in like record speeds. I got like, I got construction down the road that these dudes are building like Walmarts and HEBs in like a Whataburger. That Whataburger took like nine months, bro. They just had to pour concrete and build the thing. Le legit, that Whataburger took se like six or seven months. Legit. Like... They put the dirt down, they elevated the dirt, they put the concrete down, they waited, they, you know, they plumbed it, they, uh, electricity wiring, all this stuff. They put the walls up, the outside, the inside, the tables, the chairs, the cook. These dudes built a wall of fortitude in record time, faster than the guys down the street put up that Whataburger. I kid you not. Repairs in front of this house and next to him, Hadash, the son of Hashabaniah, made repairs. Malkajah, the son of Harim, and, and Hushab, the son of Pahath Moab, repaired another section, as well as the tower of the ovens. And next to him was Shalom, the son of Halahesh, leader of the half, leader of half the district of Jerusalem. He and his daughters made repairs. Everyone's putting work in. Imagine if Christians work like this and it wasn't like, man, I go to this church. We're not going to help with resources or time or money or stuff. Or this or that. I understand we have to build relationships and these dudes were already in relationship. But imagine if we came together for a common purpose and common cause and within our households, within our communities, within our friendships and circles of influence. Imagine if you used your friendships and circles of influence to build God's kingdom and do missions or uh, reach souls or whatever it is, right? These people are doing it, man. <laughs> And none and the inhabitants of Zenora repaired the valley gate. They built it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired a thousand cubits of the wall as far as the refu uh, refuse gate. How, how many, how far is a thousand cubits? How many feet is 1,000 cubits? 1,500 feet. 1,500 feet. So a cubit is one and a half feet. Right? So a thousand cubits, 1,500 feet. Jeez, that's a lot of feet. Malkijah, the son of Rechab, leaders of the district of Beth uh, Hakarim, repaired the refuse gate. He built, and he built it and hung his doors with his bolts and bars. Shalun, the son of uh, Kol Jose, leader of the district of Mizpah, repaired the fountain gate. He built it, covered it, hung its doors with its bolts and bars, and repaired the wall. For the pool of Shelah by the king of the garden, as far as the stairs that go down from the city of David. After him, Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk, leaders of the half district of Beth Zur, made repairs as far as the place, as far as the place in front of the tombs of David, to the man made pools, and as far as the house of the mighty. After him, the Levites under Rehum, the son of Bani, made repairs next to him. Hashabiah, the leader of the half district of Kela, uh, made repairs for the district. After him, the brethren under uh, Bavai, the son of Henadad, leaders of the other half of the district of Kala, made repairs. I can't. I'm, I sound like a robot. These names are kind of hard, bro. I don't know what to say, brother. Listen, st thank you for sticking around through me messing up these names. We're finding a lot, of, a lot of information out over here, okay? There's a lot of names. I can't pronounce it. Thank you for sticking around. If you have prayer requests, if you have questions or comments or concerns, drop them in the chat. If you're just joining us, we're reading Nehemiah chapters 1 through 7 or 6. I can't remember. And we're right now finding out Nehemiah, the cupbearer for King Artaxerxes, a Persian king, allowed Nehemiah, who's a cupbearer, 
to leave, go build the wall of Jerusalem with the gates and everything. Free of trouble on the way there. He got a pat, like a hall pass. Hey, everyone leave me alone. I got a hall pass. You're not going to rob me. You're not going to hurt me. You're not going to do stuff to me. You're not going to take my stuff. You know, all kinds. Of and then he's like, hey, you know what, King Artaxerxes? Why don't you allow me the resources and the wood and the timber to build this stuff? And he's like, you know what? Go ahead. What? So listen, all that to say, no matter where you're at, who you are, what you're going through, God can use you like he's using Nehemiah, the cupbearer, to build God's kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Cupbearer was appointed to rebuild. What? Right? Anyway, and next to him, Ezra, the son of Jeshua, the leader of Mizpah, repaired another section in front of the accent in the, to the armory. As of the ascent to the armory. At the buttress, after him, Barak, the son of Zabai, carefully repaired the other section from the buttress to the door of the house of Elisha, the high priest. After him, Merimoth. So they're boom, boom, boom. They're taking turns in sections. Boom, boom, boom. Knocking it out. Imagine. Kaz repaired another section from the door of the house of Elisha to the end of the house of Elisha. And after him, the priest, the men of the plain made repairs. After him, after him, Benjamin and Hashub made repairs opposite their house. After them, Azariah, the son of Mas, uh, Mas, uh, Masai, Masaiah, the son of Ananiah, made repairs by his house. After him, Benai, Beninui, Benui, the son of Hinadad, repaired another section from the house of Azariah to the buttress, even as far as the corner. Palau, the son of Uzai, made repairs opposite the buttress and on the... What is a buttress? Because now I'm just reading the weird... It's becoming a weird word in my head. What is a buttress? I'm asking Google. A projecting support of stone or brick built against the wall. So... A source of defense or support. So it's something. Okay, it makes sense now. Something that's butted up against the wall to give it support. Okay. It's like one, like a, like a beam or something that's like leaned against the wall to give it support. All right. And on the tower, which projects from the king's upper house that was by the court of the prison. After him, Padiah, the son of Parash, made repairs moreover. Nethanim, who dwelt in Ophel, made repairs. Ophel made repairs as far as the palace in front of the water gate toward the east and on the projecting tower. After them, the Tekaites repaired another section next to the great projecting tower and as far as the wall of Ophel. Beyond the horse gate, the priests made repairs, each in front of his own house. After them, Zadok, the son of Immer, made repairs in front of his own house. After him, Shemaiah, the son of Shekiniah, that, was, that almost had me, almost had me with the name, Shekiniah, go ahead and say that, read that, exactly, the keeper of the east gate <laughs> made repairs, after him Hananiah the son of Shelemiah and Hunan the sixth son of Zalaf repaired another section, after him Meshulam the son of Berechiah made repairs in front of his dwelling, after him Malchiah, Malchiah, hmm, yeah, one of the goldsmiths made repairs as far as the house of Nethanim and of the merchants in front of the Mifkad gate and as far as the upper room at one cor at the corner and between the upper room at the corner as far as the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and the merchants made repairs. Okay, chapter four. I know I'm butchering the names. People are leaving. People are coming and going. I just don't, I don't know what to say to you. I just, these names are so hard, bro. It's a good time, though. And as long as we're here reading together and together, we are reading. All right. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I don't know why I do the things I do. And you know what's like weird, though, is like I'm talking to you and you're hearing me as if I'm talking to you. But I'm in the room by myself <laughs> talking to myself. 
and I'm looking around and there's just the camera and the screens and the microphone. <laughs> So I know I'm talking to you. I can see people. It doesn't show me exactly who is in here, but it tells me there's a bunch of people in in the videos, uh, whether on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. And so I, I know you're hearing me, but when I laugh at my jokes, it's I think I'm funny. And on top of that, it feels like I'm talking to myself, but I know you're there. So that makes it even more funny. So anyway, the wall defended against enemies. But but it's <laughs> but it so happened when Sanballat heard that they were rebuilding the wall that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. He spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, "What are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day?" Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish? Stones that are burned. Oh, he's nervous. He's like, what are they going to do? Build in a day? They're moving. Now Tobiah the Ammonite was beside him. And he said, whatever they build, if, it even, if even a fox goes up on it, he will break down their stone wall. He's saying, hey, it's, it's not going to. They're building it fast. It's not going to be quality work. It's not going to be like strong here. Oh, our God, for we are despised. Turn their reproach on their own heads and give them as plunder to the land of captivity. Do not cover their iniquity and do not let their sins be blotted out from before you, for they have provoked you to anger before the builders. So we built what a freaking thing to say, dude. So we built the wall and the entire wall was. Wait, let me pause for a second. You know what I like about this book, uh, Nehemiah? He's saying I and we, and then he's just like, he's just talking first person. Some of the other stuff we got to figure out, okay, who's the narrator? How are they talking? How are they delivering the story to us? And they're not using first person. Sometimes they use second person. Sometimes they use third person. Sometimes they talk about themselves as if they're a different character. And then this person did this, but it's really the in it. So this, for some reason, just feels more... When it's in first person like this, like I did this and we did this and I said this and these people did this and I, me. And when it's in that perspective from the storyteller, it makes it more personable to me. Like, you know, like it's okay. I can relate to this. I understand that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I try to pay attention to like who's telling the story, how they're telling the story, the voice, the voice of the narrator, the way they're telling everything and saying everything, the details, what words they like to use. I think about all this stuff on top of reading, understanding uh, wisdom, heavenly, uh, heavenly wisdom and revelation from the spirit and context and time of the story and culture. So I think about all of these things as I'm reading, but, uh, I like how the book of Nehemiah is first person perspective. Anyway, something to think about, uh, so we built the wall and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had a mind to work like like an ant colony. Now what happened when sound sand ballot to buy it and Arab and the Arabs, the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were being restored and the gaps were beginning to be closed. They became very angry at all of them conspired and all of them conspired to come together and attack Jerusalem and create confusion. Nevertheless, we made our prayer to God, and because of them, we set a watch against them day and night. Then Judah said, the strength of the laborers is failing, and there is so much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. And our adversary said, they will neither know nor see anything till we come into their midst and kill them and cause the work to cease. So it was when the Jews who dwelt near, the, near them came that they had told us ten times, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. Therefore, I position men behind the lower parts of the wall and at the openings. And I set the people according to their families with their swords, their spears and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your houses. And it happened when our enemies heard that it was known to us. And that God had brought their plot to nothing, that all of us returned to the wall, everyone to his work. So it was from that time on that half of my servants worked at the construction while the other half held the spears, the shields, the bows and wore armor. And the leaders were behind all the house of Judah. Those who built on the wall and those who carried burdens loaded themselves so that with one hand they worked at construction and with the other hand held the weapon. Every one of the builders had his swords 
sword girded at his side as he built. These dudes are ready to build and ready to fight. And the one who sounded the trumpet was beside me. Then I said to the nobles, the rulers, and the rest of the people, the work is great and extensive, and we are separated far from one another on the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet rally to us there, our God will fight for us. So we labored in the work, and half of the men held the spears from the daybreak until the stars appeared. At the same time, I also said to the people, let each man and his servants stay at night in Jerusalem, so that they may be our guard by night and a working party by day. So neither I, my brethren, my servants, nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes except that everyone took off uh, la, 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 la. so neither i my brethren my servants nor the men of the guard who followed me took off our clothes except that everyone took them off for washing man they're really dedicated did we did i say we're reading till uh six chapter six or seven just so i know i don't know where i'm reading until someone tell me Nehemiah. Hold on. My bad, guys. I forgot. I know we're only in chapter 5. Okay, we're reading to chapter 7 today. <laughs> and there was a great outcry of the people and their wives against their Jewish brethren. For there were those who said, We, our sons and our daughters, are many. Therefore, let us get grain that we may eat and live. There were also some who said, We have mortgaged our lands and vineyards and houses that we might buy grain because of the famine. There were also those who said we have borrowed money for the, king's for the king's tax on our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as flesh of our brethren, our children as their children. And we indeed are forcing our sons and our daughters to be slaves. And some of our daughters have been brought into slavery. It is not in our power to redeem them for other men have our lands and our vineyards. And I became very angry when I heard their outcry in these words. After see, uh, serious thought, I rebuked the nobles and rulers and said to them, each of you is exacting usury from his brethren. Usury from his brethren. Like, hey, you're using them. So I called the great assembly against them, and I said to them, According to our ability, we have redeemed our Jewish brethren who were sold to the nations. Now, indeed, will you even sell your brethren, or should they be sold to us? Then they were silenced and found nothing to say. Then I said, What you are doing is not good. Should you not walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the nations, our enemies? I also, with my brethren and my servants, am lending them money and grain. Please, let us stop this usury. Restore now to them, even this day, their lands, their vineyards, their olive groves, and their houses, also a hundredth of the money and the grain, the new wine and the oil that you have charged them. So they said, we will restore it and will require nothing from them. We will do as you say. Then I called the priests and required an oath from them that they would do according to this promise. Then I shook out the fold of my garments and said, So may God shake out each man from his house and from his property who does not perform this, pr this promise. Even thus may he be shaken out and emptied. And all the assembly said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Then the people did this according to the promise. Can I thank you for sharing. Hey, Corey, thank you for liking everyone what's going on. Thank you for being here if you're on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch. God bless y'all. The generosity of Nehemiah. Sharon, thank you for sharing. Moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the lands of Judah, from the 20th year until, they, until the 32nd year of King Artaxerxes, 12 years, Neither I nor my brothers ate the governor's provisions, but the former governors who were before me laid burdens on the people and took from them bread and wine besides fork, uh, side fork, besides 40 shekels of silver. Yes, even their servants bore rule over the people, but I did not do so because of the fear of God. Indeed, I also continued the work on this wall, and we did not buy any land. All my servants were gathered there for the work. And at my table were 150 Jews and rulers besides those who came to us from the nations around us. Now that which was prepared daily was one ox and six choice sheep, also fowl were pre prepared for me and once every 10 days an abundance of all kinds of wine. Yet in spite of this, I did not demand the governor's provision because the bondage was heavy on his people. 
Hey, God bless you, Connie. Thank you for supporting. Let me shout out Connie real quick because whether we're doing video games or Bible studies or missionary stuff or raising funds or have something that needs to be supported, Connie is always supported. Connie and David, I appreciate you guys and I love you guys. Thank you. And at my table were 150 Jews and rulers besides those who came to us from the nations around us. Now that which was per now that was which prepared daily was one ox and six choice sheep. Also, a uh, foal, fowl, I don't know, foal were prepared for me. And once every 10 days, an abundance of all kinds of wine. Yet in spite of this, I did not demand the governor's provisions because the bondage was heavy on this people. Remember me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. Man, imagine this. He's getting all of this stuff, this provision. Man, Nehemiah has favor like nobody's business. You're telling me he was a cupbearer. Just talk to the king because he was having a bad day. And he's like, man, the home of my fathers before me just lies in waste and burn and rubble and stone. He's like, you know what? What do you, what do you want to do? King Zer Artaxerxes says, Nehemiah, go Nehemiah goes, you know what? It'd be cool to go back there and build it. He's like, you know what? Go ahead. And then probably Nehemiah is like, it'd be, it'd be kind of cool if I could get some permits and hall passes so I don't get robbed or hurt. You know what I'm saying? Or no one stops me and brings me to back or puts me in jail. You know what? Go ahead. Let me write these up for you. Boom, boom, boom. King Artaxerxes gives this to, to Nehemiah. And then Nehemiah, you know what? It'd be, it'd be kind of cool if we could use the, the lumber from the forest that you got to rebuild this. And if you could give us resources to do this, that would be cool. You know what? Go ahead. And now the governor is offering all of this stuff to Nehemiah. And this dude has 150 persons on his table. Man. Blessing on blessing on blessing. All right. And then he says, remember me, my God, for good, according to all that I have done for this people. The, the posture of Nehemiah's heart is incredible because he could have bought land. He could have bought slaves. He was in a position of power and authority. Not only... Not only because he was like in charge of the project, but because he came from the Persian king on a mission with permission. On a mission with permission. Interesting. Conspiracy against Nehemiah. People are dirty, bruh. Imagine everything I just said just for people to conspire against him and overturn him. And I, I'm ready to start uppercutting people at this point. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Now it happened when Sanballat, Tobiah, uh, Geshem, the Arab, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had rebuilt the wall and that there were no breaks, breaks left in it. Though at the time I had not hung the doors on the gates that Sanballat and Geshem sent to me saying, come, let us meet together among the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me harm. So I sent messengers to them saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down, but. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? But they sent me this message four times, and I answered them in the same manner. Then Sanballat sent his servant to me as before the fifth time with an open letter in his hand. In it was written, It is reported among the nations. And Geshem says that you and the Jews plan to rebel. Therefore, according to these rumors, you are rebuilding the wall that you may be their king. And you have also appointed prophets to proclaim concerning you at jerusalem saying there is a king in judah now these matters will re be reported to the king so come therefore and let us consult together then i sent to him saying no such thing as you say are being done but you invent them in your own heart for they were all trying to make us afraid saying their hand will be weakened in the work and it will not be done now therefore O god strengthen my hands after they did him dirty they're scheming and plotting Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Metabel, who was a secret informer. And he said, let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple for they are coming to kill you. Indeed, at night they will come to kill you. And I said, such should such a man as I flee. And who is there such as I who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all, but that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. You're telling me people went as far as hiring someone to give him a prophetic word. Interesting. 
For this reason, he was hired that I should be afraid and act that way and sin so that they might have, they might have a cause for an evil report that they might reproach me. He's like, Hey, you know what? They're trying to plot and scheme on me. They're trying to do stuff to get me to act out or to get me to sin so that they can go tell the king that I'm doing evil or wickedness or have ill intentions against uh, Artaxerxes, the king, of right? He's like, nah, 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 my God, remember Tobiah and, and Sanballat according to, the, uh, to these, their works, and the prophetess, Nodiah, and the rest of the prophets who have made me afraid. He say, hey, remember me and remember them. The wall completed. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul. In 52 days. In 52 days. Hey, God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thanks for allowing me to read with you. Guys, if you have prayer requests, drop it in the chat. So the wall was finished on the 25th day of Elul. In 52 days. And it let me just say this. In 52 days, it took the guys down the street seven months to build this Whataburger, bro. It took them like six months to build the, the HEB down the road. These guys are building walls around cities in 52 days. And my boy over here down the street took like six, seven months to build the Whataburger. There was a lot of hands on on this wall. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, unity. In action, And it happened when all our enemies heard of it and all the nations around us saw these things that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, for they perceived that this work was done by our God. Also, in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah and the letters of Tobiah came to them for many in Judah were pledged to him because he was the son in law of Shechaniah, the son of Ara and his sons, Jehohanan, Jehohanan, Jehohanan had married the daughter of Meshulam, the son of Berechiah. Also, they reported his goods, good deeds before me and reported my words to him. Tobiah sent letters to frighten me. It's not working, though. Then it was when the wall was built and I had hung the doors, when the gatekeepers, the, the singers, and the Levites had been appointed that I gave the charge of Jerusalem to my brother, Hanani, and Hananiah, the leader of the citadel, for he was a faithful man and feared God more than money. And I said to them, do not let the gates of Jerusalem be opened until the sun is hot. And while they stand guard, let them shut and bar the doors and appoint guards from among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. One, uh, one at his watch station and the other in front of his own house. Uh, Julia says, prayer request, God continues to work on me. I'm in a healing season. And man, bro, God has been working on me big time. Guys, if you would just take us, we're, we're in chapter seven. We're actually almost done reading. But if you could just take a second with me and help me to pray for Julius. I know like putting prayer requests in here is maybe embarrassing or hard or you're not sure what people are going to say or think. But we're here for you and we love you guys. And so Julius, thank you for uh, having the confidence to allow us to pray for you. So we're going to pray for him. God, we just thank you for Julius and everything you're doing in him and through him. And we just thank you for the work that you're putting inside of his heart and his mind and the transformation and the change and the renewal. God, I pray you continue to speak to him loud and clearly. I pray you open up his eyes and ears to see and hear you, Heavenly Father. I pray you do things um, in a way where it's his for his good and your glory that you protect him with walls of fire, just like you did the, the Israelites and you surround him with heaven's armies, angels. And we just pray that you continue to give him a desire and uh, to get into the word, to get into his prayer closet and to dig deeper into you, God. And we know that when we love you and we surrender to you, we have a desire for your commandments to not sin, to turn away from things of the world. And so I pray that you continue to work on his heart. Change the things that he cannot change and help him to change and encourage him to change the things that he can. Help him to say no to the things of the world. Help him to say yes for your desires for him, Heavenly Father. And not just go to church on Sunday, but to walk in your calling and your will for his life. God, give him peace and joy. Help him to be the father, the husband, the son that you've called him to be. 
Help him to be the leader in his church, in his neighborhood, in his community, at work that you've called him to be, God. We love you and we praise you and we thank you for this growth season of growth and the season of healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing from the past. Healing from hurt from people or church or whatever it may be. You know the situations and circumstances that he's gone through and they go through his heart and his mind, God. So we just ask that you answer the cries of his heart and the prayers inside of him that he's already spoke and the things that he hasn't even said yet. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thanks for letting us pray for you, Julius. All right, chapter 7, verse 4. Anyone else have any prayer requests? Drop it in the chat. I would love to pray with you. Also, I'm working on a prayer project. It's dropping January 1st. Uh, yeah, God bless you, man. Julius, I love you, bro. If you guys have prayer requests, drop them in the chat. I'm working on a prayer project. It's already finished, dropping January 1st. I'm gonna, I am played one of the prayers at the very beginning. I'll play another one at the end. If you show up to the stream every single day, um, you're going to hear every prayer for the next 10 days that we're streaming. Bible study only. It's not going to be on the video game stream. Just the Bible study. I'll play one at the beginning, and I'll play one at the end. And so if you guys have something specific... Uh, one of the, like, if you go, you can look at my page and there's like a list of different prayers that I have on there. N none of it's music. It's all, every single track is a prayer. Track one, a prayer from this person. Track two, a different prayer from this different person. 19 tracks of prayers. And so you'll be able to listen to them, search for them on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, uh, everywhere. But I'm going to play one every two, every single time we do the Bible study. So, uh, let me know if you have prayer requests. Now the city was large and spacious, but the people in it were few and the houses were not rebuilt. Then my God put it into my heart to gather the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be registered by genealogy. If we, if you remember anything about when people are gathering others as leadership for genealogy, you already know what's about to happen. There's, they're about to be put in their work and, and be separated by their genealogy and according to the work they were given um, by, by uh, Moses, right? You remember all that? And I found the, a register of the genealogy of those who had come up in the first return and found it found written in it. These are the people of the province who came back from from the captivity of those who had been carried away, whom Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had carried away and who had returned to Jerusalem and Judah, everyone to its to his city. Those who came with Zerubbabel were Jeshua, Nehemiah, Azariah, Ramiah, Nahami, Nahamani, Nahamani, Mordecai, Bilshan, Mispereth, Bigvi, Nehum, and Bana. The number of the men of the people of Israel, the sons of Parash, 2,172. The sons of Shephatiah, 372. The sons of Ara, 652. The sons of Pahath, Moab, of the sons of Jeshua and Job, Joab, 2,818. The sons of Alam, 1,254. The sons of Zatu, 845. The sons of Zakai, 760. The sons of Benu, 648. The sons of Babai, 628. The sons of Azgad, 2322 Okay, listen. This is the last it's the last chapter and it's going to be a little difficult because these are hard names, but as we're reading, I want you to pay attention to a couple things. The genealogy because we've read that a lot all the way back starting in like Exodus Leviticus, right? All the way to today um all the way up to what we're reading right now, uh, people were separated according to their genealogy. They had uh, jobs within God's uh, ordinance based off of what tribe they came from. Were they Levites? They were serving in the in the chapel area and the tent of meeting and in the 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 house of worship that Solomon created and Josiah and all this stuff. And if you're in this family, you're in the army. And if you did this, you did this. You know what I'm saying? And so here we are. And then I even remember uh, when we were reading together like a few months ago where there was one, I don't know if it was Josiah or one of these kings, they went to go count the amount of people who were in their, uh, you know, in their, under them. 
and God saw this as like an act of pride. And in they're like, hey, you know what? Let's not do this. Let's not do this. So the fact that we're seeing these numbers again, uh, Blessed People's Media said, please pray for me. I'm struggling with mental health and being a single mom. My kids are struggling with health issues. My youngest and I are struggling with anger and huge behavior issues. He's and it cut off. Uh, all right, let's take a break for a second. And help, everyone help me pray for, uh, I don't have the name. It just shows me bless people's media and that you're commenting from YouTube. And so I'm sorry, I don't have your name, but I'm going to pray with you. Guys, help me to pray for blessed people's media on YouTube. Um, I just read the, the comment. Help me pray. God, we just thank you for um, my sister. I pray that you bless her abundantly, God. God, you know the situations and circumstances that are going on inside of their heart and their mind and how stressful and depressing or full of anxiety or worry or fear or doubt when things start to come in and the overwhelming, overbearing sensation starts to just weigh you down and make you feel like you're being crushed under the weight of it all. And maybe it begins to, to creep in in a way where you start procrastinating or just feeling sad and isolated or stuck with no way out or maybe even brings thoughts of depression and suicide or or isolation and hurt and brokenness or pain whatever it is god you know the situations and circumstances you know the things that go through her heart and her mind as a single mom god i pray that you bring healing and restoration and, a, and a freshness and and transformation of the heart and the mind and renewal of the heart and mind and new ways of thinking and new mindsets and we cast out these these seeds and thoughts and emotions that are coming from the enemy because they have no power or authority over her heavenly father because who you are in her and who she is in you god we cast out these these seeds from the enemy these thoughts that are planted saying she's not good enough or or things are going to continue to be hard god i know that you bless those who love you and you do things for our good and your glory, God. So I pray that you bless her and you take care of her financially, physically, and mentally. God, we're praying for her kids because they're they're dealing with health issues and struggling with anger and behavior issues, God. God, I know that sometimes when I, you know, when I was a kid, I remember acting out because maybe I wasn't getting the attention or love or discipline that I needed, or maybe I was getting these things, but not in the way that, that really spoke to me and, and, and crafted me and molded me in the right ways. And so I pray that you help her to be the mother to her children so that um, you can lead and guide this family, God. I pray that you begin to work on the hearts and the minds of her children and the things around them. God, remove the anger, remove the fear, remove the hatred, remove the sadness, remove the depression, remove the brokenness. I remember being angry as a kid and it was just because I was, I was sad. I was angry and stuff at home wasn't always right and things didn't go my way. And I think after a while, we just get into this mentality we used to as kids and even now kids do that, you know, behaviors and actions around us really shape and mold us. And so I really pray that that you change the environment, you change the atmosphere, and you begin to bring peace and joy that goes beyond understanding. And you bring genuine joy to their hearts and remove anger and bitterness and frustration. And and for some reason, I just have this image of clenching teeth, like out of anger. And so I pray that you remove all of these things, God, that you begin to saturate the room in abundance and overflow, Heavenly Father. I know what your word says about children and you love children. And so I know us asking this of you is nothing and you want to because you care. God, intercede. Holy Spirit, have your way in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Thank you for allowing us to pray with you and thank you for being vulnerable. I appreciate it. Uh, guys, if you're just joining, we're reading the Bible. We're reading Nehemiah chapters one through seven. Um, and Nehemiah is currently counting people according to their families and genealogies and stuff. So here we are. We're almost finished. Put your prayer requests in the chat and I'm working on a new pro prayer project. I'll, I'll pray. I'm, I, I was unsure which one I'm going to put, but, um, I'm, I'm going to play one from, uh, my sister Perla after this Perla Nunez. She has one on here, uh, off my prayer project. And so I'm going to play this one just for my sister right here with her kids. The sons of Adonakim, 
667. The sons of Big Vi, 2000, uh, 2067. The sons of Adin, 655. The sons of Adder, of Hezekiah, 98. The sons of Hashem, 328. The sons of uh, Bazai, 324. The sons of Harif, 112. The sons of Gibeon, 95. The men of Bethlehem and Nedophah, 188. Hmm. The men of Anath Anathoth, 128. The men of Beth Asmaveth, 42. The men of Kirjeth, Jerim, Shafira, and Biroth, 743. The, the men of Ramah and Geba, 621. The men of Mikmas, 122. The men of Bethel and Ai, 123. The men of the men of other Nebo, 52. The sons of other Elam, 1,154. The sons of Harim, 320. The sons of Jericho, 345. The sons of Lod, Hadid, and Ono, 721. The sons of Sanaa, 3,930. The priests, the son of Jediah, the house of Jeshua, 973. The sons of Emer, 1,052. The sons of Peshur, 1,247. The sons of Harim, 1,017. The Levites, the son of Jeshua, Cadmiel, and the sons of Odiva, 74. The singers, the sons of Asaph, 148. The gatekeepers, the sons of Shalom, the sons of Adder, the sons of Talmon, the sons of Akub, Hatida, the son of Shobai, 138. The Nethanim, the sons of Ziha, the sons of Hasufa, the sons of Tabith, the sons of Kiros. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the stream. If you're just joining us, we're in chapter 7 of Nehemiah. I know this isn't the best and the prettiest time to jump into the stream. I don't skip boring parts, and I don't skip uncomfortable, weird conversational points in the Bible either. We're going to read them all. There's a point to everything that we're reading. Uh, right now, we're going through the genealogy of the guys who are currently... Um, remaining who are not dead from being overtaken from the kings and different stuff like that. Nehemiah is currently speaking to us, right? He, this is the book of Nehemiah. Chapter 7. The Nethanim, the sons of Ziha, the sons of Hashufa, the sons of Tabith, the sons of Kiros, the sons of Sai, the sons of Padon, the sons of Lebanon, the sons of Hagaba, the sons of Sala Salami, Salmi, <laughs> the sons of Hanan, the sons of Gedel, the sons of Gahar, the sons of Rhea, the sons the sons of Rezin, the sons of Nakoda, the sons of Gazam, the sons of Uzzah, the sons of Peshea, the sons of Basai, the son of Menu Munim, the sons of Nephishim. Do you say that 10 times fast? I know I'm butchering these names and half of everyone just left right now, but you, you read this 10 times fast live on stream in front of everyone and then tell me if you don't mess it up. The sons of Backbook, the sons of Hakufa, the sons of Harhur, Harhur, the sons of Balzlith, the sons of Mahida, the sons of Harsha, the sons of Bakros, Barkos, the sons of Sisera, the sons of Tama, the sons of Naziah, and the son of Hadifa, the sons of Solomon's servants, the sons of Satai, the sons of Safirta, Safirith. Sophereth, the sons of Perida, the sons of Jala, the sons of Darkon, the sons of Gedel, the sons of Shephatiah, the sons of Hatil, the sons of Porchereth, Zebium, the sons of Ammon, the sons of Nethanim, and the sons of Solomon's servants were 392. And these were the ones who came up from Tel Malah, Tel Harsha, Cherub, Adon, and Emmer, but they could not identify their father's house nor their lineage. Whether they were of Israel, the sons of Deliah, the sons of Tobiah, the sons of Nekada, 642, and of the priests, the sons of Habiah, the sons of Koz, the sons of Barzillai, who took a wife of the daughters of Barzillai, the Gileadite, and was called by their name. These sought their... Yeah, the, yeah right? So many nuggets. The, I th yeah, I think so too. It's like, wait, what? 
where it's hard to pronounce and there's little nuggets. Yeah, I think so too. Because like sometimes we'd be like, oh, this dude did this. Or that. Remember when, I don't know, not everyone was here, but there was a time where we were reading, um, you know, you read about Noah and Ham and how he saw his father's nakedness and he casted him out of, you know, Noah pretty much cursed his own son. And then if you read further down, we read the lineage and it's long and it feels boring. And this is just one example. But we see Ham, the son of Noah, named in this line of lineage. And we see that the Canaanites and all of these people who opposed God and opposed God's armies came from Ham. He was so cursed, his people came. He was so cursed, his lineage was the people who defied God or defied God's armies. Crazy to think about. So, yeah, there's a bunch of little nuggets in the names and the boring parts and all kinds of... You just got to pay attention. These sought their listing among those who were registered by genealogy. But it was not found. Therefore, they were excluded from the priesthood as defiled, and the governor said to them that they should not eat of the most holy things till a priest could consult with Urim and Thurim. Uh, thumb him. Altogether, the whole assembly was 42,360 besides their male and female servants, of whom there were 7,337, and they had 245 men and women singers. Their horses were 736, their mules 245, their camels 435, and donkeys 6,720. And some of the heads of their fa of the father's houses gave to the work. The governor gave to the treasury 1,000 gold drachmas, 50 basins, and 530 priestly garments. Some of the heads of the father's houses gave to the treasury of the, of the work 20,000 gold drachmas and 2,100 silver minas. And that which of the rest of the people... And that which the rest of the people gave was 20,000 gold drachmas, 2,000 silver minas, and 67 priestly garments. So the priest, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, some of the people, the Nethanim, and all Israel dwelt in their cities. Wow. That was a lot. A lot of names. People were connected. Oh, I don't want to give any spoilers for the next part. I'm not going to lie. I feel like I'm out of breath. It's been a while since I read that much out loud. It's been a couple of weeks since we did the stream on here with a Bible study where I'm just reading for an hour, hour and a half, two hours. So today we got through six, uh, seven chapters. I'm trying to get on tomorrow. I'm not going to make any promises because I want it to be natural and organic. If I do get on, it'll be around lunchtime between 12 and like two. Um, uh, I think what, well, you know. I want to get on here every day. I really do. But after like three weeks of getting on here every day, I'm burnt out. Uh, it's just, it might seem silly or weird, but like getting on here and I, just something about it. Just like, I don't know. So I'm going to get on. Um, it might be every day. It might not. But if I, you know, so keep that in prayer. Um, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to, I was going to pray this out, but actually um, I want to do something. I want to show you guys one of the prayers that are on my upcoming project that's releasing January 1st. I have 19 prayer tracks. And so instead of me praying us out of the study and everything, uh, I'm going to play this. And when this is over, I'm just going to end the stream. This is a prayer from Sister Perla for children um, who are abused, children who are hurting, and children who are brokenhearted. And so with the prayer request from uh, the sister from YouTube earlier, I really wanted to uh, share this one. And so if you're on the Bible study, if you are here when the Bible study starts and you are here when the Bible study ends, you are going to probably hear this whole project before it even comes out. So all that being said, here it is. Guys, I love you. Make it a great day or not. The choice is yours. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun. I pray you have a wonderful day today. I'll see you later. Let me do the little logo outro, put it on the end screen, and then I'm going to press play on this prayer. I love you guys. Father God, your word says children are a heritage from you. The fruit of the wound is a reward. And in your eyes, children are a blessing. So I lift up every child all over the world, and I pray that they would know that you are their creator, 
who has given them purpose on this earth, that they are not what the world tries to tell them, but their identity is in you. And they have been created in your image and according to your likeness, Lord. And you call them blessed. And with you by their side, nothing is impossible for them. No matter the environment that they are in right now, you are with them, Father God, and they are never alone. I lift up every child that has been living in a home where their parents are divorced or separating, and they may be feeling like it's their fault that that happened. I pray that you guard their hearts and mind from that lie from the enemy, for they are not responsible for the decisions of their parents. And help them see that you alone are the perfect parent, their Heavenly Father, that loves them more than anyone else. For it is written, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as a prophet. So when the enemy tries to come at them with his lies and confusion, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you speak to them and remind them that to you they are precious and honored and loved by you, that they are more precious than jewels or gold, and their life has purpose, for you have blessed them to be born for such a time as this. I lift up every child that is dealing with mental, physical, verbal, or sexual abuse in their home right now. Every single one of those things that are, are not of you, Lord, but they are the, the works of the kingdom of darkness. Satan and his demons, according to your word, Father God, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, evil forces in the heavenly realms. So by the authority that you have given me in Christ, I command every principality, evil force, working against these children to die in the name of Jesus. Let every plan set forth by the enemy be dismantled right now and release your warring angels to protect these children. If they are being mistreated in any way, Lord, I pray that you bring what is in the dark and bring it to the light and rescue these little ones from their situation. For I know that nothing is impossible or too hard for you to do. You are the God who takes what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it around for good. For you say in your word, let these little children come to me and do not hinder them. For such belong the kingdom of heaven. So they are royalty, Lord, your special possession. And unless we turn from our sins and become like little children ourselves, we will never get into the kingdom of heaven. So, Father God, I pray over the children that may be listening right now, that, they may, that you may reveal yourself to them like you did to me, and that they will come to taste of your goodness and encounter the love of their Heavenly Father. Guard their hearts from the lies of the enemy. Don't let it be hardened towards you, but give them a heart of flesh that will receive your truth. And even if their parents may not know you or believe in you, reveal yourself to them. And though they may be suffering in, in many ways, vengeance are yours, God. And if they put their trust in you and take refuge under your wings, you will be faithful to protect them and be their shield. And according to your word in Matthew 18, 5, 6, anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf is welcoming me. But if you cause one of these little ones who trusts in me to fall into sin, it will be better for you to have a large millstone tied around your neck and be drawn in the depths of the sea. That is how precious children are to you. And you care about everything that is done to them. So I pray you heal and restore their hearts of the children that have not been loved well, that, had not, that by man they have not been seen as a blessing. I pray that you help these little ones forgive everyone that has hurt them so their hearts won't be filled with bitterness and hatred. But instead, I pray that they will be filled with the desire for your word and grow in knowledge of you. For fear and shame are not their portion, but grace and mercy are. I pray that they would not be controlled by fear, but by your power. And may they seek you and call on your name, Jesus, when worry and anxiety tries to creep in. Give them courage, Lord, to help them to be strong every day. Uphold them with your righteous right hand, for you are their God who goes with them wherever they go. So I declare what your word says in Jeremiah 29, 11 over every child. For I have plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I declare that your will would be done in their lives here on earth as it is in heaven. And I believe by faith that you have already answered and move on their behalf. Then I ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.